member of the U.S. House Ways and Means Committee. He says the horror in India could play out again and again in other countries if we don't act now. And blocking access to vaccines, he says, is anti-humanitarian. Congressman Doggett joining me now from Austin in Texas. Sir, thank you. Many of your colleagues in Congress and in the House of Representatives are of Indian descent. The largest Indian diaspora is in the United States. Clearly, people have huge concerns. This is what Representative Ro Khanna said earlier this week to CNN. It is personal for me. I have family there. Fortunately, they're safe. But every day I'm hearing stories of someone who is getting COVID, who can't go to the hospital, who is sick. In some cases, we've heard people who passed away a few days because they don't have oxygen, they don't have medical care. It's really devastating. And there is not an Indian American family in my district who I've talked to who isn't affected, who doesn't know someone who has had COVID, who has not been able to get into the hospital. It's a humanitarian crisis. Congressman, I do want to get to what is going on with regard to these vaccine patents uh, in a moment. But firstly, to, uh, to what is going on in India as we speak. 120 people an hour losing their lives. America sending millions of dollars of taxpayer-funded aid equipment. But that aid is not getting to the people who need it most. What's your message to the Indian government this hour? Well, I... Uh... First would say that, like my colleague Ro Khanna, that pain is felt right across Central Texas with the Indian American community here and so many others of us. We put a candle on our porch uh, to symbolize the unity. Uh, major collections are going on to try to support uh, the people in India. Uh, I think there were some serious mistakes made uh, in India in handling this. But it is a serious mistake for the United States not to share the recipe for these vaccines. Clearly, we have not had enough vaccine for either Americans or for the rest of the world. And the best way, if you have a shortage of vaccine, is, of course, to make more of it and to have more manufacturers making more of it instead of leaving this as a monopoly for a handful of pharmaceutical manufacturers. Well, you tweeted, and I quote, blocking access to vaccines is anti-humanitarian, it's anti-diplomatic, and it weakens American influence for good on the global stage. You're backing the hashtag Free the Vaccine campaign. Just explain um, what, what it is about this proposal that's being debated at the WTO in Geneva today. Uh, that's important, and why it is that you support it. Well, South Africa and India have petitioned for a waiver, an exception to be made in the agreement for trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights, uh, what we refer to as a TRIPS waiver, so that the recipe can be shared without intellectual property uh, litigation and objection. Uh, it's important to note that in the case of Moderna, one of the major vaccines, it was financed its manufacturer, research and development, distribution, almost entirely by United States taxpayers. So I say our taxpayers have an interest in what happens. We needed more manufacturing in the United States for Americans, but we will not survive well in America if everyone else uh, is infected uh, by this pandemic and it's not stopped. For the United States to have a goal of 70% sure. Uh, immunized by July 4th that the president announced yesterday is extraordinary. But it is also extraordinary to know in India that we have 2% immunized. In South Africa, less mm. than 1% across Latin America. Very small numbers. Even our neighbor Canada, only 3%. The United States and mm. the European countries need to be working together to share this vaccine recipe with the rest of the world to stop a pandemic right. that will have more variants that come back to our shores if we don't stop it everywhere. Well, they are not. Um, this proposal, sponsored, as you rightly point out, by India and South Africa, is facing pushback from countries in the EU and by the United States. You've petitioned the president, Joe Biden, for support. Are you confident that you have the president's support at this point? I would say that I'm hopeful. Yesterday, he said he was still deciding. I think the time for deciding has come to an end. What we need is action. 
Fortunately, we have a dynamic new trade ambassador in Catherine Tai, a personal friend. I think she shares our concerns. She is under the, the initial restraint of the xenophobia of the Trump administration, which colluded with Big Pharma to stop uh, the spread of this vaccine recipe around the world. Uh, clearly, the administration is hearing from many people in big pharma and the pharmaceutical manufacturers that also have influenced what's happened in the United Kingdom. There are uh, contradictory, conflicting pressures there. I hope that because I believe they share our goals, that we'll see some significant progress today or soon thereafter. But I and my colleagues are calling on faith leaders, on business leaders, recognizing a public health leaders to join us in continuing to encourage the administration to act and act immediately. Because if we get the TRIPS waiver, as India and South Africa have requested, it will still take a number of months before you can actually have this manufacturing begin while we watch each day the horror of what's happening in India, in Latin America, and too many other places. The, 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 the counter argument to this, of course, is that, you know, throwing the global supply chain into flux at a time when, as you rightly point out, Americans are getting vaccinated quickly, but they are still in the process of getting vaccinated, um, is the wrong decision. Do you think there's any merit in that? I don't. We already have an example of where Pfizer licensed to Sanofi the ability to make 125 million doses of their vaccine for use in the European Union. This can be done. Uh, yes, there are supply chain issues about ingredients and the like, but we can't simply say because there are limitations that we will not make available to the rest of the world the hope that America and Western Europe have for their own citizens. We're all in this together. It is by the very name a pandemic, something that affects the entire world. And right. I've worked uh, not only uh, with colleagues toward the administration, but toward American citizens to say, you have a stake in this. We, will, we know of the South African variant. We know of variants from Brazil, from the UK. If we don't solve this place everywhere in the world, it's Americans who will ultimately be sick and die as a result of our looking too inward instead of recognizing we are citizens of the world. It does seem remarkable that, uh, what, 16, 17 months into this pandemic, we are still having to remind people that uh, we are only as strong as our weakest links. Uh, Congressman, thank you very much indeed, indeed for joining us. We are taking a Thanks very so